Welcome back. Now that we've added the DynamoDB table to our service, the next step is to create functions that will interact with that table to allow us to add votes and to get the votes of songs inside of our database. So I'm going to create a new folder here, and I'm going to call this folder backend. It's going to contain all of our backend function code. Currently, we just have the handler.py file, which is the default file that's created whenever we're creating a boilerplate service. Next, I'm going to go into serverless.yml, and I'm actually going to edit this from having just the hello function here with the handler inside of the handler.py file and the hello function inside of that. And I'm going to change this to the name of our first function. We're going to call this function record song vote because it's going to record the song votes inside of our database. Then we're going to change the handler, and we're going to say we expect this to be inside of the backend directory. And we're going to call this file name record song vote dot handler. So this means we'll need to actually move a file inside of the backend directory. So we could just use this handler file for right now. Let's move it in there. And then let's rename it. In this case, we need to make it match record song vote. So we'll do that. And once we've changed this to record song vote, we need to go in here and make sure that our handler function is going to be called handler instead of hello now. So I'm going to delete everything else in here and call this handler. Every Python handler needs to have an event and a context in here, so let's add that in. And we'll add the rest of our function code in a second. First, we're going to need to include some dependencies, like Bodo3. And this dependency is included in the AWS Lambda runtime, so we don't need to install it locally unless we're testing locally. I'm also going to need to import the OS library, which is also a default library along with JSON, to interact with the operating system. And the JSON library is to interact with JSON data, both loading it and outputting it. The operating system library will help us get the environment variables that are saved in the Lambda runtime. Next up, we're going to create a DynamoDB client here. I'm going to call this just DynamoDB to make it simple. And then I'll set this equal to the Bodo3 client value here. And in particular, we'll use DynamoDB to get that DynamoDB client out. Now, once all this is set up, we can actually start writing our code inside of our handler. The first assumption I'm making here is that data is going to come in from this event value that's in the handler, and there's going to be a body here. Now, this is what it'll look like if there's information coming in from an API gateway request, for example. But when this event comes in through the API gateway, we're probably going to be seeing it as JSON. So I'm going to need to do JSON loads, or load string, the event body. Now this will turn it into an actual Python object instead of a JavaScript string, and that'll let us actually interact with the value here. So what we'll be looking for will be the song name that we want to increment the vote on top of. That'll be formatted like this when we send it in, and we can just set this value equal to a song name variable. With this done, we can start actually incrementing the value inside of DynamoDB. This will handle that API gateway request, which we'll be setting up inside of the serverless.yml file a little bit later. But for now, we can start interacting with DynamoDB. So let's use the DynamoDB client, and let's use the update item method of that client. Now, in order to update an item, we'll first need to know what table name we're interacting with. In this case, we'll be loading the table name from the OS environment variables. In Python, you can load environment variables using the OS library and typing environ, and then naming the environment variable you want to interact with inside of these square brackets here. In this case, I know there's going to be a variable called DynamoDB table. The reason I know this is because if I copy this and I go back over to serverless.yml and I scroll back up and look for the environment variables inside of my table here, you'll see that we have this DynamoDB table value that matches identically to what we have over here in record song vote. So once we are sure that we're going to get this properly loaded in, and it should be making these environment variables available to every single function in our service, we can go back over to record song vote, put a comma here, and then specify the other information we need, which is the key. The key is going to let us actually figure out which item we're trying to reference inside of DynamoDB. Now for this key, we know we're going to be looking at songs by song name, so I'll use the song name key, and then I'll use the DynamoDB syntax to specify the type of value that we're looking for. First, we'll have to say we're looking for a string value, and that string value will need to match the song name that's coming in from the API request. 
Once we've done this, this should be enough to find us the item inside of the table. But what do we want to do to the item? Currently, this is an update item operation, so we want to make some change. So in this case, we'll use something called an update expression, which will define how we want to change the value inside of DynamoDB. Now, I want to add a certain amount to the number of votes inside of this item. So I'm going to use a DynamoDB specific syntax to go add. And then I'm going to say I want to add to the votes attribute inside of this item. And I want to add a certain amount. Now, in order to add to this, I need to say what I'm trying to add. In this case, I'll use a variable name with the colon inc. And this is the variable syntax specific to DynamoDB's update expressions. But I have to define what colon inc or colon increment is. So in the next step, I'm going to create an expression attribute value. And that expression attribute value will tell me how much we're trying to increment by. So let me add this as expression attribute values because we could have more than one of these variables like colon inc. And I'll just start by defining that. So colon inc is in this case going to be a number because we want to increment by one each time. And we'll make sure that that number is one. So with all of this taken care of here, this would go in and it would update the votes count inside of a particular song item and increment it by one. But we also want to get back information from this operation and return it to the API so it knows what the most up-to-date value of the vote counts for a particular song are. So to do this, we can add one more property here of this request. We're going to say we want the return values. And we don't just want whatever the value of the item was before we modified it. We want to know the return values of updated new. So it tells us all the new information about the item. So now that we've actually set up the request to do this, we're going to have to create a response for our user. Now the response that we're going to create is going to need to contain a few things that aren't just the data that we want to send back. First, we're going to need to say what a status code is for this response. Assuming that this request has gone well up to this point, we're going to just say it's a 200 good response. Then we'll also need to give it headers, because if this API is available through multiple domains, we want each of those domains to be able to access it successfully. In order to do that, we have to add something called access control allow origin headers. And for this header, we can specify the domains we want to allow to use our API. Maybe we only specify something like serverlessjams.com, which is going to be our new website. Or maybe because we're not sure exactly where our website will live yet, we just say star. And that's what I'd encourage you to do right here for right now. Now, this is a bit more permissive in terms of what it allows, but it's also going to make sure that you don't inadvertently block yourself because of access control allow origin settings. Now, once this is finished, we'll have one final section down at the bottom here of the body. Now, this body is going to contain all the information that we want to return back to the API. And the way we're going to get this out is by sending JSON in this body. So I'm going to need to use JSON.dumps or JSON dump string. And this is going to allow whatever we put inside of here to be turned from a Python object into a JSON string. Now inside of here, I want to return what the current votes are for the song. So I'm going to say votes, and then I'm going to get the resulting vote count from the operation above. But if I actually go back and scroll up to this operation, we didn't return a result from it. So let's make sure that we have a result here that we can actually work with. So I'm going to say result is equal to the result of this update item operation. And then later down here in the JSON dump section, I can actually reference it. So let's go ahead back in here and let's say we want the vote count to be the result and we want to reference the attributes inside of that result. So let's say attributes here. Now all of this would be just how we would parse through the result that DynamoDB gives us and we could reference this in the Boto3 documentation. I just happen to have it in front of me now and know exactly what this should look like. So after we look through those attributes, we're going to look for the one that we want for this particular request. In this case, it's the votes attribute, because if we look above, that's what we were interacting with up here in the update expression. And once we've set that votes count here, we'll also need to say that we don't want the entire result of the votes count. We don't want to return the n for number. We really just want to return the value to display outside of the API. So we'll also need to say n here so that it can reference the value inside of this object and return us the one that we're looking for or whatever the current vote count is because we're incrementing by one.
So once we finish this entire process here, this should give us a fairly well-structured response, and we can just return the response forward through the API gateway that we'll be setting up in just a moment. So with all of this out of the way, let's go back over to serverless.yml, and let's actually create the function. So with everything saved in serverless.yml and saved in record song vote, I can go in here to my application and run a serverless deploy. And this should actually create this function inside of my AWS environment. So with this deployment finished, we should be able to look for the serverless jams dev record song vote function inside of our AWS account. I'm going to go there now. Over here in the AWS console, I've searched for my serverless jams dev record song vote function. And in order to test it, I can go in here and select test event because I don't have any configured. I'll need to configure a test event and then paste in some information that will mimic the result of an API gateway request to an API gateway endpoint that will be connected to this function. I'll call this API, I'll call this API gateway test and then I'll go ahead and create this test event. Now, once I'm done with this, I'll be able to test the function and we can go in here and see the results. I'm gonna test it a bunch of times and then we can see how many vote counts are actually successful for this. Now, it looks like we managed to test this successfully and it not only returns back what we expect, but it also tells us the most recent vote count. On the front end, we could end up getting this result back out through the API gateway and then parsing it for the current vote count for the song that we're looking for. Now, because this event can also be modified, you could test it out with different values. So let's say we have new song here that we're gonna add in. Let's save this test event, press test one more time. And it looks like we are successful in seeing that it is currently just at one in its vote count. And as we continue to go forward and test it further, the vote count will be incremented and returned to us. So it looks like this function is working properly. In the next video, let's try and add another function to get the data back out of the DynamoDB table.